Hello again. I'm back with another clock. I found this one at a local thrift store and what caught my eye with it is the fact that it's a Sessions clock but on the dial it reads Sessions Electric which I had never seen before. It looked rather old and when I turned it over I realized that it has a start knob which means it is not a self-starting clock. And I haven't seen a Sessions that's not a self-starting clock. So I got it and uh, I haven't plugged it in yet, but before I do, I'd like to open it up and make sure that the wiring is intact. First though, I'd like to double check with my ohm meter. Just touch the leads to the plug here. And numbers are flashing, so the wiring should be intact. So next, I'm going to open it up. Just four small screws over here. There's one. Two. There's three. And four. Okay, let's see what we have here. Now, most unusual. First thing I'm noticing is odds are this is, well, not odds, but this is not the original power cord. Uh, you have wire nuts with some black electrical tape. I'm sure that's not how they made these clocks back in the day. I'm guessing this could be somewhere from the 30s or 40s. But more interestingly is, oh, there goes one of the wire nuts. It has a Hammond rotor. Let's see if I can show that. It's a Hammond. So that's really unusual to me anyway, for a Hammond to be in a Sessions clock. It looks as if this was put together intentionally. I don't think it's a mixture of company parts. In any event, let me put this wire nut back on, plug it in, and let's see what happens. Okay, let's plug it in. Turn it on. And obviously nothing should be happening because I have to give the start knob a spin. Well, one thing I can tell you, it's rather noisy. I think you can hear that. Oh, that's the set knob. Well, it looks like it's working but it's really noisy. So let's shut this off here. So certainly I'm gonna to have to take the whole thing apart and hopefully a good cleaning and lubrication of the gears will, will eliminate all that noise. So let me get started on that. And a couple of unusual things I'm seeing, the way this is set into the case, just a couple of screws holding these two brackets into the wood and then there's one here on the bottom and the coil looks particularly old it's coming apart I'm gonna to have to secure this with some tape so it doesn't fall apart on me another thing I'm noticing which makes me think it's quite old the felt pads on the bottom instead of being glued on these are nailed into place and you tend to see that on much older clocks, the more recent ones, 40s and 50s, they're glued down. Uh, in any event, now I'm probably guessing that this is from somewhere in the 1930s. Anyway, I'm going to work first on undoing these three screws to remove the whole mechanism from here, so I'll do that on my own. I've removed the first two and loosened the third. 
Let's see how this comes out of here now. Okay. Put the glass and the case aside for now. Take a look at this. Well, it looks a bit different from what I'm used to seeing for both Hammond clocks and sessions. In any event, the first step to take this apart, I'm going to remove the hands. I just have to take a close look to see if this is threaded on or friction grip, so I know which way to go about removing it. So let me take a closer look at that. It looks to be a friction grip holding it in. I see a small nut that holds the minute hand down, and I found that on clocks this old, it can be very difficult to remove the hands. So rather than even try, I'm going to loosen them up by using a bit of WD-40 and just spray a little into a cap. And then just apply a little bit right around the stem. I'm also going to see if I can get some underneath it around the nut here. And I'm going to let this soak in for a good 10-15 minutes at least. And then we'll look to see if I can remove the hands. Okay, it's been soaking for a while. And even though I think this is a friction grip second hand, one thing I like to do with clocks that are not self-starting is if you hold the start knob tight and as you're holding it, start to try to unwind the second hand. And sometimes you'll get lucky and it'll just come off. So let me give that a try. By holding the start knob, I know that it's not spinning on the stem. It's moving on its own. And it almost looks like it's coming up. There you go. Now there's a small nut over here. Let's see if I can loosen that. Might be turning a little. I think I have it. You got to be careful because these hands bend so easily. the dirt on this one and let's see if I get lucky with the hour hand let me get a piece of cardboard to protect the dial All right, I'm not going to force it. I may put some more WD-40 on it. I also have to take a closer look. Sometimes the second hand is attached to a sleeve that only when the mechanism is removed am I able to maneuver it from, uh, from the outside. But I really think I should be able to get this off from here. But we'll find out, so let me take a closer look. And I meant the hour hand. Okay. Despite all my best efforts here, I cannot budge this hand, and I'm reluctant to force it. So 
I think what I'm going to do, the first thing I want to do is remove the power cord. It's pulling too much on these wires here. And then I'm going to look to secure the coil with some tape so it doesn't come apart on me. And then start to take this apart. I think the first thing will be to remove the rotor. The problem I'm seeing is that to get into the gears here, the nuts that I would have to undo are on this side of the plate, here and here. And either I have to come in with a little wrench sideways. Normally, if I could get the dial off, it would be very easy to open it up. But anyway, I'll take it one step at a time. First the cord, then the coil, then the rotor, and then I'll continue. Okay, I've removed the power cord. I've taped up the coil. I also removed these little tubes from the wire. What these are for is when a power cord initially was attached, they would solder the connection. And this would be slit over the wire, sort of like that. And then once the wire is soldered together, they slide it back over the connection. Uh, nowadays, if I'm doing something like that, I'd, I'd use a heat shrink tubing. That way it stays put, doesn't slide around. Anyway, next we'll undo these screws and remove the rotor. Oh, it's like a spring holding it down. All right, this, this is definitely a Hammond mechanism, the whole thing. I recognize this. This is a, a classic Hammond rotor, the kind that has a plug covered by solder, which can be removed, and it lets you re-lubricate these. And this is probably very noisy, other, even notwithstanding the noise of the gears. You can almost, I think you can hear it. So um, I'll open this up. I'll be cleaning and lubricating this, as well as hopefully everything that's in here. Uh, I'm going to take a closer look to see if there's any other way to access the gears other than trying to go sideways to undo the nuts over here. So give me some time to uh, work on that. Okay, another thing I'm noticing, I believe this may have been serviced in the past. For sure, it got a new power cord attached, but the solder job around this rotor is such a sloppy, messy job that I think someone opened it up to try to re-lubricate it at some point. Uh, when you see one of these for the first time, it's just a small little dollop of solder, very neatly done. So I'm thinking, let me try to open this up, clean it out, re-lubricate it, and just reseat it and see if this is where all the noise is uh, coming from before I look to open this up as it looks like it's gonna give me a hard time to, to do it from sideways. So. Next step, I'm going to remove the solder from here, and there'll actually be a little plug in a hole somewhere along here. So let me get set up for that. I've set the rotor up in a clamp. This gets pretty warm as you work on it, and I just start melting the solder, letting it drip down. And there's so much solder on here, this is going to take quite a long time to do. So I'm going to work on it on my own, and once I have it all cleaned off, then I'll uh, continue. I've removed the solder and the plug. You can see the hole. This is the plug. And what I'm going to do next is fill the rotor with liquid wrench. And once it's full, I'm going to let it soak, usually overnight, at least 12 hours or so. And that helps to loosen up any old oil that's in here. So uh, we'll give that some time. It's been about 12 hours, so now I'm going to drain the liquid wrench from here. And you can see all that green, that's the old oil. 
and just shake out as much of it as I can and then pretty much just let it sit upside down and let it drain for oh, quite a while make sure it, that it's totally empty and at that point then I'll fill it up with my three-in-one oil okay what I've done is fill this up with the three-in-one oil let it sit for a while and then drained it and then I put in just a little bit of synthetic clock oil now I'm going to reposition the plug back in the hole and then I'm going to seal this up with some solder I'll do that on my own and then I'll continue the plug is resealed now I'm going to reposition it in the mechanism I'll put the little spring clamp over it Next, I'm going to reattach the power cord and see if this is running any more quietly than before. I'll do that on my own. The cord's attached and it's plugged in. I'll give the start knob a spin. And it's running. But it's still making quite a lot of noise which means I'm going to have to open it up, as I mentioned earlier, by undoing the nuts on the side here, all the way under the, that are positioned under the dial. So let me get set up to do that. Turn it off. What it looks like I can do is with this small wrench, I can slip it in and undo the nuts that are in here. What's unusual is that there's one nut here, here, and here, but around this side there are two. I really don't see a reason why they stack two over here. I'm thinking I could probably get away with just one. Anyway, let me work on undoing this and then I'll look to remove this whole back plate. The nuts have all been removed. I'm going to try to lift up the dial from the back plate. and it's really quite snug. So this could take a little time. Let me work on removing it on my own and once I have it out, I'll continue. Okay, a couple of things. One, to make it more stable, I've attached my support legs to the plate. And the second thing is I've realized in order to remove this, I need to take off the set knob and the start knob. So to do that, these are usually friction grip, but this almost seems to feel like it's threaded. There's one. Okay, now I can go back to removing the plate. I think I've freed the dial up from the plate. Let me try to lift it up. Okay, well one thing I'm seeing, the gears down here incredibly gunked up with a lot of oil and dirt. Look at all of that. Anyway, I'll take a couple of photos, although these gears seem rather simple, just looks like three of them. And then try to figure out if I can get this removed 
as far as uh, getting the hour hand off of here. So let me take a closer look. I'll show what I have here. The bottom part is pretty simple, just three gears. One, two, and three. And then this is the start knob. But on this half, it appears as if this plate is attached to the dial by three screws. And they seem to be three-sided blades. And I do not have a screwdriver blade like that. This one over here. And the third one. So I'm unable to remove this from the dial. And I'm sure that that's supposed to come off. And that's how I would remove the uh, hour hand. Ideally, I would place this as an alternative into the ultrasonic with some hot soapy water to clean it up, but I'm concerned that there's a risk that the ultrasonic could remove some of the painting on the dial. So what I think I'm going to do is position this on something so it's not submerged in water. Just the bottom half will be in the ultrasonic to clean it up that way. I'll be able to clean up the rest of these gears and then look to reassemble everything and hopefully the clock will be running a lot quieter. So let me get to work on all that. Everything has been cleaned and I was able to clean up this plate without damaging the uh, dial at all. What I have to do now is lubricate the gears. I use a synthetic clock oil and an oil pen and you just have to put just a little bit at the end of the pivots on the gears at either end as well as in the holes in the plates where the, where the pivots fit into. And once I've done that, this gets reassembled ex just in opposite of how I took it apart. And pretty much it'll be something like, this will go here, this goes here, and this one will go here. And I'll be taking this plate, flipping it over, and just guiding it into position and getting the pivots into the holes in the plates. I'm gonna do that on my own, and then I'll continue from there. Once it's back together, I'll be reseating the uh, two knobs for the uh, set uh, knob stem and the uh, start knob. So let me work on all that. Well, the good news is I have everything back together and I think it's functioning properly. The set knob is lined up well. It's the gears are working for that. The start knob, when I rotate it, the gears on the inside are turning as well. And I even found out why there were two nuts on this one stem here. It turns out the threads on it were stripped, so one nut never got tight. But the threads towards the top of it were intact, and a second nut let that get tight. However, the bad news is all the manipulating I did in turning around caused this wire to break off from the, from the coil. And as a result, I now have to try to repair the coil which involves finding the wire in here where it broke off from and then stripping this and trying to solder the wire back together. It's been done before. It's a really difficult task. Uh, I'm gonna start by undoing the screws here and hopefully removing the coil from this side without having to undo everything that I put back together in here. So let me get started on that. Now, the thing about taking these coils apart is you have to keep them in the same position when you put it back together. It can affect the polarity of the field that's created, the magnetic field. And if you put it in backwards, in theory, the clock can end up running backwards. Uh, I don't know how important that is with clocks that are not self-starting, because with these, if you happen to turn the start knob the wrong way, the clock will run backwards. But in any event, I'm gonna label which side is the top left and the top right and the top for the coil, because even these little plates that are in here I'm told these need to be put back in the same order that they come out. So let me do some labeling, and then I'm going to look to undo the two screws here. I've removed the two screws along with these little brackets that held the clock into the case. I've labeled the plates. This should lift out of here now. And I need to remove these plates from the coil. unless they're too tight to push out, which seems to be the case, so maybe I'll just leave them where they are. Let's try to remove the tape I put on here.
This is a slow go. Okay. Now here's the wire. How about that? I can see it. That is the wire that has broken from this wire here. So I need to strip this, tin this wire with some solder, and then try to solder them together, and then retape it, and at the same time, hopefully, not break off this wire. I may have to expose it just to see what the deal is. Maybe that needs to be reinforced as well. Anyway, let me take a closer look and see how much of that work I can do on my own, because I don't know how much of it I can actually show you, but I'll, I'll explain to you step by step what I'm doing. One thing I want to do first, though, is make sure that I haven't broken anything else here, that I still have a circuit before I go to the trouble of trying to solder it. So with my own meter, let's see if we still have an intact circuit here. And we do, numbers are flashing. Okay, good sign. So what I'm going to do next, this is a little shaky here, with some epoxy glue, I'm going to reinforce the connection on this wire so it's not wobbling all around. Then with some solder, I'm going to tin the end of the wire. That's where you just kind of coat it with a little bit of solder. I'm going to do all of that on my own, and hopefully when I come back, you'll see a nice tin wire, and I'll be ready to attach this wire. I've already stripped off the insulation here. I have to solder that there. So let me work on all of that. What I was able to do, and I'll try to zoom in for this, I reinforced the connection of the wire with some epoxy glue here, and I was able to solder this wire onto the wire coming out of the coil. And it's trying to solder something against something that has the thickness of a human hair. It's really thin and quite difficult. What I'm going to do next is close this up, tape it shut, and then check the continuity with my ohm meter to make sure everything is intact. Okay, I've secured it with some tape. Feels pretty solid. Let's test it with the ohm meter now. Numbers are flashing. Everything is intact. Looks like we have a working coil. So I can proceed placing this back into here. I'm just going to secure it with the screws and these brackets again. I'll do that on my own. I have the coil back into position. What I want to do next is reseat the rotor. And I'm going to secure it with a little clamp, or a spring, however you want to call it. Before I go any further, I'm going to reattach the power cord and let's see if it's running. I'm going to seat the uh, second hand. And 
going to plug it in. Give the start knob a spin. And it's running. Now I still hear it a little bit, but it seems a lot quieter than it was. And I'm also noticing when I turn it straight, the noise pretty much goes away. So what we'll do now is look to place the hands back on along with the glass to clean that up a bit and then get this back into the case. Although I will look on cleaning up and restoring the case as uh, get it look a bit polished. So let me get to work on all that. I've cleaned the glass. To synchronize the hands, I have the hour hand set on the 12, and the minute hand only positions one way, either up on the 12 or to the 6. Obviously, I'm going to set this pointing to the 12. And then I will secure it with a small nut that fits over it. Okay, once that's secure, then I just have to position the second hand. And I'm going to put this aside for the moment. <clears throat> and I want to focus my attention now on restoring the case. It looks kind of dull and dingy. There's a lot of dirt on it. I want to, with a wood cleaner, I'm going to clean up the wood. Then using my Howard's Restore finish, I'll stain it. And then the Howard's Feed and Wax, I'll give it a wax polishing. And hopefully that'll shine it up a bit. I also plan to repaint the back plate. So let me get to work on all of that. I've completed cleaning the wood, staining it, and waxing it. And they came up with a pretty decent shine. Overall, the wood's in, in good condition considering the age of the clock. I also painted the back plate. What I want to do next is seat the mechanism back in the case. First, I have to place the glass. And then the mechanism. Now I have to place the three screws to hold it in. Let me do that on my own. Once that's in, I'll be ready to, the next step will be to attach the power cord and the back plate. But let me get this in first. I've got it secured in the case. Next, I have to hook up the power cord. I also came up with a rubber grommet that fits in the back plate so I can pass the power cord through it and it'll give it more of a finished look once it's in position. So let me work on attaching the power cord next. What I've decided to do is so that there's no risk of the wire nuts falling off the connection, I'm going to join the wires using heat shrink tubing. And the way to do it, slip one piece over the wire and the other. Then, when I connect the wire, I slide the tubing over the connection. And when I hit it with my hot air gun, it'll shrink up and it'll uh, secure this the, the two wires together. Try to do the same thing here. Okay. So once I hit it with the hot air gun, which is this, those will shrink up, be nice and snug. This makes a lot of noise, it'll take a minute or two, so let me do that on my own. 
the tubing is shrunk, the connections are nice and secure. Now I'm going to position the wire into the case and then place the back plate on and I'll do that on my own. The back plate is on, the wire is in place, everything is set and ready to go. I'm going to place this on my workbench and uh, plug it in and we'll see if it still runs. I have it set up and plugged in. Let me give this start knob a turn. And it's running. And it's running quiet. So there you have it. It's a Sessions Electric that has a Hammond motor and unusual mix of company parts. I estimate this to be from somewhere in the mid-1930s. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please check out some of my others and any questions and comments are always welcome. That pretty much wraps things up. Bye for now.